your question. Choose the odd one out. Now that's a simple question. Devilfish, cuttlefish, sea hare and starfish. I'm sure all of you have already guessed in this. Three of the four belong to phylum mollusca and only one belongs to echinodermata. Which do you think belongs to echinodermata? Well, devilfish is mollusca, so that's wrong. Cuttlefish, again mollusca. Sea hare, again mollusca, so three belonging to the same phylum. But starfish belongs to echinodermata and this is the odd one out. You can see the images, beautiful pictures of the sea hare, cuttlefish, the devilfish and of course the starfish. I'm sure many of you would have seen a starfish either in real or on TV, definitely, right? So, as you all know, starfish is an echinoderm. The devilfish, cuttlefish and sea hare are all mollusks. So, the odd one is starfish. Let us look at this question. The proboscis gland is an excretory organ in dentalium, echinus, cucumeria or sarcoglossus. Now, what is a proboscis gland? It is used for excretion. And this is a characteristic feature of the hemichordates. Now, which among these belong to hemichordata? It is sarcoglossus. So, the right answer is D, sarcoglossus, which belongs to hemichordata. What about dentalium? Dentalium is a mollusk. And in mollusks, it is the nephridia which help in excretion. So, this is the wrong answer. Echinus and cucumeria both belong to echinodermata. And in the echinoderms, the excretion or the removal of the waste product is by simple diffusion. So, both echinus and cucumeria are wrong. Can you look at this image? Now, this is the proboscis. Okay, the excretory organ, the proboscis. So, the proboscis gland is an excretory organ in hemichordates. Of the given option, sarcoglossus is the hemichordate. Dentalium is a mollusk. Nephridia are excretory organs in mollusks. Echina, echinus and cucumeria are echinoderms. In echinoderms, the excretory wastes are removed out of the body by simple diffusion. So the right answer is sarcoglossus. Now for a fill in the blanks question. Spiny skinned animals are placed in the phylum. Fill in the blanks. Now. Spiny skinned animals are characteristic features of echinoderms. That is because, now it, it is part of their endoskeleton. Now what's an endoskeleton? The skeleton that is found within an organism, right? Now, this endoskeleton in echinoderms is made up of calcium carbonate plates and from that arise spine-like structures. So this is a characteristic feature of echinodermata. So hemichordata is wrong, coelenterata is wrong, Echinodermata is correct and mollusca is definitely wrong. Spiny skinned animals are placed in echinodermata. The spines on the skin of echinoderms are part of the endoskeleton. The endoskeleton is made up of calcium carbonate plates called as ossicles that bear spines which project outside. Can you see how beautiful this sea urchin looks? And can you see the spines that are coming out? These are the spines. So the right answer, it belongs to Echinodermata. Your question now. Indirect development means. What does indirect development means? Now development can be of two types. Okay, so it can be direct or it can be indirect. Now what development are we talking about? Once fertilization takes place, the male and the female gamete fuse and then the zygote when it develops. Now, if it directly develops into the adult form without an intermediate larval stage, then it is called as a direct development. But if there is a larval stage, then it is called as indirect development. Okay, so now let us look at the options. There is no larval stage during development. Wrong answer. There is a larval stage during development. Yes, this is the right answer. The embryo develops inside the body of the organism, but we've not said anything beyond that. So this is the wrong option. There is no larval stage mentioned here. The embryo develops in water. Again, this is 
the wrong definition for indirect development. So indirect development is there is a larval stage during development. When the life cycle of an organism includes a larval stage distinctly different from the adult, it is called as indirect development. When the larval stage is absent in the life cycle of an organism, it is called as direct development. So the right answer is indirect development is nothing but a larval stage in during development. Now let us do a match the following question. It's very simple. You have the scientific name in column 1 and the common names in column 2. You need to match, okay, the common name to the scientific name. Pila. What is pila commonly called as? I'm sure all of you know the answer. It is called as the apple snail. So how I write the answers is I just write the column 2 option next to the name in column 1. That's how I remember. I hope it helps you the same way. So Pila is commonly called as the apple snail. So I'm going to write 3 here. Pintada. What do you think is Pintada? It is nothing but. Where do you get the beautiful pearls from? From the pearl oyster. So B is 4. Sepia. Sepia is nothing but the cuttlefish. So C is 2. And Aplesia is the sea hare. So Easy way to remember, 3, 4, 2, 1. Okay, now let us look at the options. Is it A, 1, 2, 3, 4? No, this is wrong. Is it B, 4, 3, 2, 1? No, this is also wrong. Is it C, 3, 4, 2, 1? Yes, 3, 4, 2, 1. This is the right answer. And D is wrong. It says 3, 4, 1, 2. Let me show you some beautiful images. Can you see the common apple snail? Many of you would have seen it. The sepia pearl oyster and of course the sea hair. Pila is commonly called as the apple snail. Pinktara is the oyster that produces pearls. Sepia is cuttlefish and cuttlefish is a marine mollusk with an internal shell. Aplesia is commonly called as the sea hair. So this is the right option.